Okay, um, yesterday's video I made a bit of a pig's ass of uh, explaining what was, what was going on here. Um, what we've made here is a twin cotter locking system and I'll show you how it works. Um, so what we've got at the back of the uh, of this is a worm, a worm and wheel that uh, that do the dividing. Now, a worm wheel can't be driven backwards and forwards, but it does have to have a certain amount of play in it. And I hopefully you'll be able to see this. But if I should be able to hear it at least, there is a little bit of play in there, and that the amount of play that's in here is certainly more than. Um, than you know a few a few holes movement on the uh, on the ring which is why it's important that you should always you should always uh, divide in the same direction so what we've got what we've done here is we've taken this uh, this horrible aluminium ring which I'm going to remake in steel um, and bolted it onto the front of the housing um, and in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to remake it in steel I'm going to remake it with a slightly smaller internal diameter and turn this down a little bit more um, so that I can countersink the uh, countersink, so I can counterbore the uh, the heads of these bolts in. So um, that's a fairly tight fit. Um, it's one of it's one of those fits. It's not quite it's not quite a, uh, a tight fit, but it's a ve it's a very it's a yeah. There's probably I don't know three hundredths or thereabouts, uh, given the the effort I had to make to, to push it to push it through. Now through here there is a bore uh, that bore is p positioned such that a four millimeter bolt because that's what uh, what's using what's used here is tangent to the small internal diameter here and that four millimeter bolt bolts into this cotter here and runs through a clearance hole in this cotter here so what we have is a pair of a pair of cotters that are eight millimeters in diameter now because the the four millimeter bolt is tangent the eight millimeter cotters actually impinge on the uh, on the spindle and so they were turned were in place in here when I turned the internal diameter and then separated so when when we tighten this bolt we pull these two cotters together so if this is the position where they were turned internally as we tighten that that bolt up we pull them together and they press on the spindle and that's how it locks um, there's no uh, material being uh, distorted which is what happens on a lot of tail stocks for example lathe tail stocks my short blind tail stock does that it's got a it's got a split and when you tighten up the uh, the lock bolt it actually distorts the body um, the R system the ARE lathe that I've got which I'm not using at the moment which I probably should actually does have a split cotter lock on the tail stock so here we're just in contact here and if I if I turn turns if I give this literally just a little bit of finger tightness I can just about make it drag that's dragging quarter of a turn that's not going anywhere and that's how it works so quarter of a turn goes from just slightly dragging through to locked absolutely solid um, you don't need to to really gronk on it to, to make it lock certainly it's certainly enough to hold stuff in place while you're dividing and milling onto it. So there we go. That's how it works. Um, it's a dead handy little little mechanism. Um, I need to do a better job of making this one, but um, yeah, dead handy. Lots of fun.
there you go hopefully that explains things a little better night